Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a solution to question A2 from the 2011 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement. We're first going to want to consider two sequences of positive real numbers. We'll denote them by a n and b n, and they satisfy the following properties. So a1 and b1 are both 1. b n is a bounded sequence. And so since we're talking about sequences of positive real numbers, we can read that as bounded above because it's automatically bounded below by zero. And we have this like little bit of a recursion. So bn equals bn minus one, an minus two. And then our goal is to show that this sum converges and to find its value. So the sum is uh, over all of the reciprocals of these products from a1 to an. And so maybe the first thing that we can notice is we can take this equation and we can solve it for an. And uh, we get the following. So we have uh, a1 equals 1 and then an equals, so it's easy to solve this, so we get bn plus 2 over bn minus 1 and that's for all n bigger than or equal to 2. And now another thing that we can notice is that there's nothing said about this sequence at all except that it's bounded, but yet we are not only asked to find to show that this is convergent, but to find its value. So that means that the value of this sum must be the same regardless of what bounded sequence we have. So we can do a little bit of exploration here in order to find out what this sum should be, because the sum should be the same regardless what bounded sequence we have. So let's consider the simplest sequence, b1 equals b2 equals b3, all of these equal one. Okay, so that means that A1 is going to be equal to 1, and then A2 is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 over 1, so that is 3. And then notice that um, A3 is also going to be equal to 3, and so on and so forth. So that makes this sum that we're interested in, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over, and so we have a1 times a2 all the way up to a n. Notice a1 is 1, all the rest of them will be 3, so this is 3 to the n minus 1. Okay, good, but that's a geometric series. We know what the sum is. That's going to be the first term, which is 1 over uh, 1 minus the common ratio, which is 1 third. So that gives us a sum of 3 halves. Okay, so we know what the sum should be, so this should be 3 halves, but what we need to do now is show that it converges, not for this specific bounded sequence, but for any bounded sequence. Okay, so I'll clean up this part of the board. Remember, we're working towards a sum of 3 halves, and then we'll look at this in general. Okay, good. So I've reiterated what we have. We have a1 is 1, a n is given by b n plus 2 over b n minus 1. And notice this plus 2 is happening outside of the index, but this minus 1 is within the index. And then we can rewrite our sum as this 1 plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of the product on top is b2 up to b n minus 1, and then the product on the bottom is b2 plus 2 up to b n n plus 2. And that's just using this formula inside of this sum. I've taken out the very, very first term just uh, to clear up any confusion that might happen with some empty product. Okay, great. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to notice is that the numerator here has n minus 1 terms, and then the denominator here has n terms. So we would like to maybe symmetrize that fraction a little bit, and maybe if we symmetrize that fraction and break it apart, we can turn this into some sort of telescoping series. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's notice we have the following. So let's include the next term in the numerator. So b2 up to bn minus 1 times bn all over b2 plus 2 
all the way up to bn plus 2. And so now we've symmetrized this quotient a little bit, but notice that's not equal to what we have for our sum anymore. So what we want to do is somehow manipulate this symmetrized fraction until we get our sum and here. Okay, good, and we can do that in the following way. So I'll extend this a little bit, and then um, I'll put a parenthesis here, and then we're going to add two and subtract two. Okay, so let's see what that does. If we add two and subtract two, that's like obviously adding zero, but then if we add two and distribute, we can cancel this thing out in the denominator, and then if we subtract two, we've regained our part of our sum here. Okay, so let's see what we get uh, if we write that out carefully. So this is gonna be B2 all the way up to Bn minus one, times bn plus 2 all over b2 plus 2 up to bn minus 1 plus 2 up to bn plus 2. So that is from using this term right here. Great. And then we're going to subtract twice times this. So this is going to be minus 2 times b1 up to bn minus 1 all over b2 plus 2 all the way up to bn plus 2. Okay, good. Now let's see what we can have here. Notice that this is going to cancel this, and uh, this guy right here is exactly the portion that we need inside our sum. So that allows us to solve for this thing inside our sum as two symmetrized fractions. So notice what I had here before, before I added zero to it, I had B2 up to Bn over this B2 plus two up to Bn plus two. And now I have B2 up to Bn minus one and B2 plus two up to Bn minus one plus two. So that's gonna easily allow us to solve for this yellow box in terms of two fractions that are kind of symmetric. So let's uh, see that really quick. So I'll write this down. So this is going to be B1 up to Bn minus 1 over B2 plus 2 all the way up to Bn plus 2. So again, that's inside our sum. That's what we want. And that is going to be equal to 1 half, okay, because we've got a 2 there. And now let's make sure to get the uh, signs right. So if we move this over to this side of the equation and divide by half, so that means uh, this part is going to be positive and this part is going to be negative. So we're going to have B2 up to Bn minus 1 over B2 plus 2 up to Bn minus 1 plus 2. So that's this term. Great. And then from that, we are going to subtract this term, but we're going to subtract that term after having not added the zero. So we're going to like cancel those two things out so that it's symmetrized again. So we have B2 up to Bn over B2 plus 2 up to Bn uh, plus 2. Okay, great. And then we can close that off. And so let's talk about the motivation again. So what that allowed us to do is write, wrote our unsymmetrized fraction. What I mean by that is I've got less terms in the numerator than in the denominator in terms of a difference of two symmetric fractions. And what I mean by that is I've got the same number of terms in the numerator and denominator. And in fact, what we can see here is that this is going to build a telescoping series, and that's exactly what we're going to use in the next step. Okay, good. So I'm going to take this and put it into this sum up here, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I've moved the result from the last board up to the top. So now we have this sum is one plus half times this uh, infinite sum of this difference of two terms. So now what I want to do is let's set C n equal to uh, this difference, or sorry, maybe we'll set C n equal to this term right here. So notice this is going to be B2 up to B n over B2 plus 2 all the way up to B n plus 2. Good.
And now notice that allows us to write this sum in the following way. So we have one plus one half and then times the sum n equals two to infinity of cn minus one minus cn. Okay, good. But uh, notice that this kind of leaves off what C1 should be, and C1 should be 1. And so this recursion really works for n bigger than or equal to 2, and so for n equals 1, we get 1. And I'll let you guys check that. Um, that has to do with having an empty product and really solving that original equation at the very bottom of um, this sum, which is a, a bit easier and kind of a one-off thing that you have to do. Okay, great. So now we've got something like this, which means we can write the nth partial sum in the following way. So this is going to be 1 plus 1 half, the sum n equals 2 to capital N of cn minus 1 minus cn, which we can write as 1 plus 1 half times c1 minus c of capital N. Okay, good. But uh, notice that is going to give us three halves um, top minus um, CN, but we can rewrite CN as this. So we've got B2 up to BN all over B2 plus 2 all the way up to BN plus, plus 2. So our partial sum Sn is going to be equal to that. So that means our sum will be the limit. So that's something we need to calculate. Okay, I'll clean up the board. I'll bring this up and then we'll finish it off. Okay, so just to reiterate, we have this nth partial sum is 3 halves minus 1 half times this product B2 up to Bn. And then in the denominator, this product B2 plus 2 all the way up to Bn plus 2. Okay, good. So notice we haven't used anything about Bn being bounded yet. So let's suppose that uh, Bn is bounded by some number capital B. And so uh, we can use that as the bound for this sequence. And then another thing I want to do is notice we can take this bi over bi plus 2, and we can rewrite that in the following way. That's bi plus 2 uh, minus 2 over bi plus 2. Good. Which is going to be equal to 1 minus... 2 over bi plus 2. Good. But now notice if bi is less than b, then we know that uh, bi plus 2 is less than capital bi plus 2, which means when we take the reciprocal, the, the bi is going to be bigger, but then we take the negative, it's going to be smaller again. So in other words, this whole thing is going to be less than or equal to 1 minus 2 over uh, capital B plus 2. Okay, so let's reiterate how we got that. So we know that little bi plus 2 is less than capital B plus 2. Good. And then uh, that means that 1 over little bi plus 2 is bigger than 1 over b plus 2. Great. But then if we negate that, it turns the inequality around again. So negative 1 over bi plus 2 is less than negative 1 over capital B plus 2. And then we just add 1 to both sides of that and multiply by 2 as needed to get to there. Okay, good. But now we can put this fraction back together. And notice when we put this fraction back together, we're going to get capital B over B plus 2. Okay, good. And notice that's going to be true for all of these i's. But notice we've got a product of n such terms here. So this is going to give us 3 halves minus 1 half. And I should say this is uh, less than or equal to. Um, and then we have capital B over B plus 2. 
But that is true for all of these. That's true for B2 over B2 plus 2, B3 over B3 plus 2, all the way up to Bn over Bn plus 2. And there are n minus 1 of these. Now the next thing that we want to do is take the limit of this as capital N goes to infinity. But now it's obvious that as capital N goes to infinity, this is going to go to zero because B over B plus two is less than one. So this term goes to zero and you're left with three halves. So we get the limit of the partial sums is equal to three halves, which tells you that this sum itself is equal to three halves. And that gives us our final answer. All right, that's a good place to end.